So this question, in this webinar, I will be answering 68 questions about my experience of studying in London. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I first started at UEL as a student. So I moved over um, to do my degree um, and then I started working for the university. So I work now as an international officer and I help students from the US and Canada um, during the admissions process. So these are the different things that we'll be talking about. Um, I'm not going to read every single word, but just to give you a brief overview of what we'll be discussing, everything from um, planning and pre-departure to actually getting there. And um, I'll be speaking of my experience and how it's kind of shaped me and or changed me. Um, so hopefully this is something that will be really insightful for you guys. Um, I'm super excited to kind of talk about my experience and also a little nervous. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell by my voice, but it's a little shaky. So I'm going to try to do my best. So a little bit about me before we dive into the questions. Um, my name is Caitlin. I grew up in Florida, um, but my family is from California and um, they currently live in California. So whenever people ask me where I'm from, I'm just like, I don't know where I'm from. I'm from California. <laughs> Next question. Um, I'm your go-to girl if you have any questions at all during the admissions process. So don't be scared to reach out to me. Um, I started my degree in September 2017, and I have just finished my undergraduate degree. I studied clinical and community psychology. Um, for anyone who might not know that much about it, um, clinical psychology, it focuses mainly on mental health. Um, so you're a student and you work for UEL. How does that work? So if I moved to London in September, I literally started my internship in October. So I started my internship right away. Um, so I started as a volunteer intern. And at the end of my intern internship, um, they asked me if I wanted to stay on part time. And they also asked me if I wanted to get paid. So I said, yes, of course, I want to get paid. Um, so I did a part time internship. And then once my first year ended, um, they asked me if I wanted to work part uh, full time. So um, my first summer in London, um, I was working full time. Um, and so it's just kind of built on from there. And um, I feel really lucky to say that um, I'm able to continue to work for the university now that I've graduated. Um, it's something that I've known that I wanted to do for quite some time now. So the fact that it's actually happening for me, um, it's almost surreal. So yeah, this picture. Um, so I'm standing on Tower Bridge. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with London Bridge, um, the nursery rhyme London Bridge and so on. Um, this bridge actually gets mistaken for London Bridge, um, but it's actually not. It's Tower Bridge. It's a completely different bridge. In fact, London Bridge, when you see it, it's literally just a regular bridge and there is nothing exciting about it. But Tower Bridge is just a beautiful landmark in London. And um, it's only 25 minutes from campus, which is really, really nice. So. We have a tube station on campus, so you can literally just get on the train and you ride it all the way to the very end and you walk off or off the train and out of the station and you see Tower Bridge. So um, yeah, it's really, really cool that we are so close to Tower Bridge and it's really, really pretty if you haven't seen pictures of Tower Bridge already. Um, they light it up at night and it's just so beautiful. 
planning and pre-departure. So this is a photo from my first trip to London. So I first visited London um, in the spring of my senior year. Um, I was super, super excited. I had never been to London before. And so I just took so many pictures on my first trip to London. Um, the first question, did you always know you wanted to pursue your degree abroad? Um, so I discovered UEL in my junior year of high school. So I kept them in the back of my mind um, from junior year to senior year. So um, I didn't always know that I wanted to pursue my degree abroad. It wasn't until I actually started my college search that I came across UEL. What made you want to study in London? Um, there's so many different reasons. There's so many different benefits of studying in London. Um, with these questions, because it is um, a webinar on my experience, I'm literally just going to talk about the first thing that pops into my mind. Because um, I know you guys already know like the key things like the three year undergrad degree, the one year masters and so on. So I'm not gonna, I don't wanna bore you guys with any redundant information. So the first thing that I thought of um, that came into my mind when I read this question. So I was considering studying abroad in London, but also Barcelona because I really have a passion for Barcelona. Um, and so the main difference or the main thing that pushed me towards um, studying in London um, versus studying in Spain was the language barrier. Um, I know it's something that kind of deters a lot of students when studying abroad. Um, you could literally study abroad anywhere in the world, but if you don't speak the language, um, it definitely makes you have second thoughts. So my Spanish is not the best. Um, I know just enough to get around. So because of that, I was not super confident to do an actual degree in Spanish. So um, I picked uh, London for that reason. Um, with any major decision that I make, I always make a pro and con list. So when I actually made the pro and con list for London, there were so many pros um, and I did a pro and con list for schools in America, Spain, England, and there were definitely more pros for England as a whole. So that was kind of um, the determining factor in why I picked London in the very end. Um, how did you pick your program? Oh, I love answering this question. Um, so I have, this is really personal to me. Um, I've always loved helping people. Um, I've been volunteering ever since I was a little girl. Um, and I love to help people. Um, when I was in high school and everyone was like asking, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do in college? I was just like, I don't know. Don't ask me these difficult questions. All I knew was that I wanted to help people. And um, there's so many different things that you can do to help people. I figured that the best way to help people was to understand them. So I decided to study psychology um, in order to get a better understanding of people as a whole. And I figured um, I would decide what I wanted to do with my life. I figured that would just come eventually. Um, I knew that picking a course was kind of my first step in the right direction. And so UEL offers quite a few topics in psychology. So I basically narrowed it down to clinical psychology and child psychology. And I ended up picking clinical psychology because it interested me more. What did you pack that you definitely didn't need? So I am definitely the type of person who likes to be prepared. Um, if any of you guys have seen the show Brooklyn Nine-Nine, 
I am definitely Amy Santiago. I love to be prepared, to stay on top of everything. I like to anticipate things as they come and I hate uncertainty. Um, so I'm always like trying to make plans for the future. And so when it came to packing for London, I basically packed everything that I thought I was going to need which was honestly just a big mistake because I ended up bringing way too much. Um, I would honestly say that I didn't wear 75% of the clothes that I brought with me. So I ended up packing almost all of my clothes in a suitcase and taking it back with me. Um, my first trip back home after I moved to London and I just left it um, in my home in California because I just did not need all of that stuff. Um, I know it's very, very hard to pack light, but I honestly advise packing light because you're going to collect so many things during the time of your studies. And um, yeah, so that's why I always say pack your favorite clothes. If you have like a favorite pair of jeans or a favorite sweater, definitely bring that. But if you've got like cute sandals or cute summer dresses, don't bring that because you're not gonna be able to wear them until like April or May. Um, what were you excited about and or nervous about before you left? Um, I think because I knew I was going to London for quite some time, any nerves that I had, they gradually disappeared. And honestly, I was not nervous at all until I actually said goodbye to my parents at the airport. That was like when things got really real for me. Um, but the moment I walked through security, I kind of felt like at ease and the rest kind of just came easy. Um, there were so many different things I was excited about. <laughs> um, the silliest was probably the British accent. I literally adore British accents. Um, so I was super excited for that. Um, I've always been very independent. So me moving away for college was kind of like my last push for independence. And so I think that's what I was most excited about um, when I moved over to the UK. Academics and language. So this is a screenshot of a recent conversation I had with my friend Jaseel. Um, he basically pointed out that I spell certain words the way British people spell certain words. Um, so yeah, I thought that that would be funny to add to this. Um, how are classes different in the UK than in the US? Um, so I didn't go to college in America, so I can't speak to that level, but I find that my classes, they were very structured. And I always knew what I was going to do. I always knew what was expected of me. I was given my assignments and the deadlines way in advance. So I was never like surprised by anything. There were no like pop quizzes. In high school, I had a lot of pop quizzes and I hated them, but um, I never had any like pop quiz in college, which, I don't know how well that compares to the US, but I imagine that you would probably have a lot of pop quizzes if you went to college in America. Um, which class was your favorite? So although I did my degree in clinical psychology, my favorite class was an elective that I took in occupational psychology. So occupational psychology is basically um, psychology of the workplace. It aims to kind of get companies to work better and so on. So um, basically to improve the way a company functions. And I found it really, really interesting because it was so applicable to the real world. So everything that my teachers were saying, I was comparing it 
to my office. So um, that was definitely one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it. Um, if I had to pick a second favorite, then my second favorite would definitely be my clinical classes, just because um, clinical psychology is what I wanted to study. So those specific classes I really, really enjoyed. Um, it's not my most favorite, just because it was really, really tough, not in an academic way. The assignments were tolerable. It, it's the conversations that you have when you study clinical psychology. So we talk about mental health and we talk about um, disorders such as depression and anxiety. And sometimes those conversations, while they're important to have, they're really hard to have. So I remember just feeling so like, drained after leaving my clinical class just because some of the things we talk about are so hard to kind of wrap my head around. What is your favorite phrase slash word to say in the language you learned? Um, I don't really have a favorite phrase or word. I've definitely picked up on the lingo. Um, for example, British people love to say the word sort. So they'll say, oh, go speak to him, he'll sort you out, or oh, we'll help you get things sorted. They have this um, phrase, I think it's called like, see it, say it, sorted. And um, yeah, I'm just so used to hearing that word on a daily basis. I feel like Americans, we don't really use that word as much as British people do. Um, I definitely say it more just because I hear it on a daily basis. I'm literally reminded of that word. So um, I know it sounds silly, but that's definitely something that came to mind um, when I read this question. What advice do you have for immersing yourself in a new language? So this question doesn't really apply. We speak English in the UK, or as British people like to say it, we speak the Queen's English. So it is more formal than the way Americans speak. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the same language. Um, what I did to kind of adjust and to pick up on the little differences was, um, so I took my phone and my laptop and I changed the language from American English to British English. It's not a major difference, but it does help with the spelling. So um, that's definitely something that I needed to learn because I was writing a lot of like studying psychology involves writing essays and lab reports. So um, I don't think my lectures ever really took off points for misspelling certain words, um, but it is something that I wanted to make sure that I took care of going into my degree. Food, um, the most important topic of discussion. Um, so this photo is a picture of roast dinner. So roast dinner um, is a very traditional um, food in the UK. Well, it's a very traditional meal. That's a better way to put it. Um, roast dinner is something you have on Sunday with your family. And so um, it's something that a lot of British people look forward to. It's something that they're, British people, they won't really invite you to it unless they consider you a super close friend of the family or, or if they basically consider you a member of their family. Um, so yeah, um, I felt really special when whenever my friends did invite me along for Sunday dinner because um, I almost felt like I was part of their family. Um, and if anything, um, even if you're not British, you can still go get roast dinner. You can go get it with your friends. A lot of restaurants will serve it. Um, what is British food like? Now, this webinar is tailored to Americans and Canadians. So I'm not expecting any British people on here, but I will say with confidence, that British food is very bland. 
there's no seasoning, there's no spice. And I mean, that's the way they kind of like things. But I, I like spicy foods. I like foods with flavor and British food is just so bland. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love Britain. I love living there. Um, but the food could use some work. <laughs> what new foods did you try? Um, so one of the great things about living in London is that it's so diverse. You meet people from literally all over the world. So um, I tried Indian food for the first time and Indian food is really, really good if you haven't had it before. Um, one thing that I did try was shepherd's pie. I don't know if any of you are familiar with shepherd's pie, but it's going to sound a little weird and maybe a little gross. It's basically mashed potatoes and ground beef mixed together. And I know that sounds really weird, but it tastes so good. Um, so instead of calling it ground beef, they call it minced meat in the UK. Um, I don't know if anyone already knew that, but that's definitely something, I don't know, I just felt like throwing out there. Um, what is the weirdest thing you ate? Um, I don't really think there was anything that I would say is weird. Um, I don't like to think of food in that way. Um, what kind of food did you miss? I definitely missed comfort food, if that makes sense. I think in America, it's so, easy to just get in your car and just drive to a restaurant, drive to get, to go, and so on. Um, I really missed how there were so many different types of options of food in America. So I think in my first year, I literally started eating McDonald's just because it reminded me of America. Um, and when so I'm from America and I spent 18 years here and um, I never really cared for McDonald's, but when I, like, when I first lived in London, I was eating McDonald's all the time just because it was familiar. Um, but I definitely miss Chick-fil-A and Starbucks when I'm in the UK. We have Starbucks in the UK, but we don't have a wide variety of drinks. Um, English Starbucks, they literally only serve coffee and tea and that's it. There's nothing, no frappuccino, no nothing, no excitement. So I definitely miss Starbucks when I am in London. Service learning and internships. Oh, before I start, this is a picture of me and my manager, Felicia. Um, this was on my very first recruitment trip for the university. So I went on my first recruitment trip last year in September. So after my second year of studying and just before my final year, I went on a recruitment trip. Um, how did you get involved in the community? Um, because I started my internship right away, I didn't have as much free time as everybody else. Um, so growing up in America, I was really big on volunteering in my community. Um, and I did less of that in London just because I'm so busy. And I know that's, that's not a good excuse, but it's kind of the truth. Um, so I kind of got involved in the sense that I'm literally always exploring London. Um, I'm literally never on campus unless I'm working. Um, and so any free time that I did have, any time that I wasn't in class or working, I was literally out exploring London. Um, there's so much to do. One of the things that I did that I really loved um, was that I joined a church. So I come from a religious background, but I was never enthusiastic about going to church. I never openly said, I love going to church. Um, it wasn't until I started going to Hillsong in London 
that it became part of my like weekly routine. It became part of my identity and I love going to church. Um, what did you do at your service learning placement or internship? Um, so I did do a placement in my last year. So I did my clinical placement um, with PSC. PSC is a national network of clinical psychologists in the UK. Um, I did my placement with the London chapter. So once a month, I would sit in on their meetings and uh, basically just observe them. Um, they offered so many opportunities to get involved with their projects. Um, and so I basically just learned about what they were doing, um, the route that they took to become a clinical psychologist and so on. Um, I had to write papers um, about my placement. So um, I worked with them very, very closely to write papers throughout my final year. And with my internship, um, so I started in my first year and it was as simple as just making calls to students and I really did enjoy making calls and so over time I was eventually given more responsibilities and that basically just turned into me kind of overlooking all students from the US and Canada and um, it's something that I really, really enjoy doing. Um, in what ways did your placement or internship influence your future goals? Oh, so I, I always, I feel like I kind of start glowing when I start talking about my job because I really do enjoy it. Um, and I always feel so lucky that I have a job that I sincerely enjoy. Um, most people don't love their jobs, so I feel so lucky that I do, especially because I'm so young. So I literally just turned 21, um, and I have this job that I really, really love, so I just feel really lucky um, that I have it. Um, in my After my first year at UEL, after my first year of studying and working, I knew that I liked my job and I figured I would just stick with it for the time that I was at UEL. And then by the end of my second year, um, I ba Felicia basically asked me if I wanted to become a recruitment officer. So basically just the same job that I was doing, but with more responsibilities. And I was so, so, so happy. I literally said yes right away. And um, it literally just built from there. So I knew that this was something that I wanted to do after I graduated, If, but I didn't know if it was a possibility. So I literally told myself to work hard. Um, I'm a big believer that things fall into place and that everything happens for a reason. Um, I know that that might sound cliche, but I do believe that. And so I literally just told myself to work hard. And if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. And so in my last year of studying at UEL, so basically at the end of November, I asked Felicia if there was even a possibility of me staying um, and working with her after I graduated. And Felicia was just so excited to hear that um, I was interested in working with her. Um, I love working with her and the rest of my team. We work in a very small office, so it definitely has that family feel to it. And um, yeah, it's just been an amazing journey for me. And um, that's why I'm always so happy to share my experience. Um, I like to say that the only limits that you have are the ones that you set on yourself. So um, I really do 
believe in that. Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide because I could literally spend all day talking about my job. Um, daily life. Before I jump into the questions, I'll explain the pictures. So question 24 says, was there anything unique about studying abroad in that place at this time? For example, any current events that happened? So the biggest, most recent event that happened was Brexit. So um, Brexit has been going on for the last few years, but we did, so the UK didn't actually leave the European Union until January 31st of this year. And it was a super big deal in Britain because it finally happened. And um, before you guys ask any questions, um, Brexit definitely affects Europeans more than it affects Americans. So I wouldn't worry about Brexit um, affecting you. And then I was literally just going through the pictures in my phone, trying to think of major events that happened. And I came across this picture of um, Prince Louis. So Prince Louis was born on April 23rd, 2018. So Prince Louis is the third child of Prince William and um, Kate. Um, Kate is, so I kind of like learned more about the royal family once I started, um, like once I actually moved over. Um, actually I'm not going to go into that because there's so much I could talk about the royal family. Um, but I was on my way to work one morning. Um, I was on the Docklands campus and I was in the East Building and I was passing by the hub on my way to the office. And there's a flat screen TV in the hub that they usually have like the news on. So I was just walking by and I took like a glance at the TV screen and it said that Kate was in labor. And I literally took a picture of the headline because I was so excited. Um, it was a really special day in the UK and a lot of people were super, super happy about um, the birth of a new prince. So um to go to the questions what advice would you give to another student um there's so many different things i could say um i kind of already touched on this but i would definitely say um the only limits are the ones that you set on yourself and i feel like sometimes it's good to be a yes person. So saying yes to every opportunity, just because you never know what's around the corner. Um, what was the most surprising thing you did or saw? Um, so I've been in the UK for three years now, so it's quite a while. Um, the first thing that comes to mind um, is this little boy that, I would see on my daily commute to work. So when I go to work, I get the train. Um, it's everyone takes the train in London. Um, so I get the train and this little boy, he gets on the train and he is wearing his uniform um, because you have to wear uniforms when you're in formal education. So anything just before college, you have to wear a uniform. So this little boy gets on the train in his uniform and he's all by himself. And when I first saw him, I was just like, where are your parents? And I was kind of like looking around at the train and no one was like batting an eye because it's like, it's quite normal for young kids to get the train. And so, yeah, the first time I ever saw him, I was just completely shocked. And yeah, I guess you could say that was the most surprising thing. Um, so I, I grew up in the suburbs and I never took public transport until I actually moved to London. So I had never taken a bus, never taken a train. So seeing a little kid um, on the train was just, I feel like that's something I won't forget. Describe your favorite day. Um, 
I feel like this is going to be really personal to me just because, um, like I said before, I really love going to church. It's something that I look forward to every week. So my favorite days were always Sundays, um, the days that I got to go to church and then hang out with my friends after. How safe did you feel there? So I do get the question about safety from time to time and um, London is a big city like any other city like New York City or Los Angeles so crime is inevitable but the actual university is located in zone three so zone three of London is quite a residential area so there's 24 7 security on campus just for that extra touch um and when you're actually on campus it's very normal to see little kids on campus so like little kids on their scooters riding their bikes you see families taking stroll like taking a stroll through the campus so our campus is located on a dock so they're literally just walking down the dock and passing through our university um, the moment that you do step out of the university, there's an elementary school, there's neighborhoods, there's a park. So the location that the Docklands campus is in, it is a very residential part of London. So I do feel quite safe when I'm on campus. What was the weather like? Um, so London is definitely known for the rain and rightfully so um it rains the majority of the year but i will definitely say that it fake rains in london so what i mean by that is yes it does rain most days but it doesn't rain hard enough to where you need an umbrella and a lot of times it will just rain on and off throughout the day. So it will literally only rain for five minutes and then it stops and then another five minutes. So I like to say that it fake rains in London. Um, the weather is awful um, compared to like the rest of the world, I would say the weather in London is quite mild. So it's not too hot and not too cold. Um, but in the spring and summer, when we do get nice weather, it's literally glorious. Everyone is just instantly in a better mood. Everyone is at the park hanging out. Um, and I really do enjoy London when the weather is nice. Were there any cliches that were proven true or false? Um, I don't know if this counts, but so americans obviously love the british accent i love the british accent and i never denied that moving over um but one of the things that i thought was really neat was as much as americans love british accents british people love american accents which is amazing news for us ladies <laughs> um people literally love my accent and i hope it doesn't make me sound like cocky or anything but like when i meet people every day like i've been there for three years now and i still meet people every day and they're just like i love your accent and i'm like i love yours too so it's just um it's an instant conversation starter and people are always really keen to just keep you talking just so they can listen to your accent for longer. Did you learn anything about politics in the UK? Um, so I definitely have a better understanding of politics in the US than I do in the UK. Um, I feel like one of the things I learned was that the queen doesn't really have any like power in the uk um she doesn't really like make any decisions if that makes sense it's very much the prime minister and so the prime minister is like the equivalent of a president and so it's really the prime minister who runs the show and the queen is kind of just there to maintain her presence 
Um, yeah, so that's basically an American summary of UK politics. Um, I already answered number 24. Number 25, did you listen to local music? What was it like? Um, so even before I moved to the UK, I was always a fan of indie music and English bands. Um, one of my favorite bands is Catfish and the Bottlemen, and I actually got to see them live for the first time in London, and it was such an amazing experience. Um, yeah, so the music scene is really, really big in London. Um, so you definitely have that to look forward to if you love to go to concerts. Um, local music. Um, so we have something called Grime. So Grime was, I think it was born in East London, but Grime is basically their take on like hip hop and rap. Um, it sounds really different from like the normal like rap that we're used to in America, especially because of their accents. And I think it was born in East London. So it's very close to um, where I live. Um, what is in style there? One thing that is in style that kind of annoyed me at first was sneakers. So I don't really wear sneakers all the time. Like when I'm in California, I tend to wear sandals because it's really hot. And so everyone in London wears sneakers, especially girls. Um, and when I first moved over, I couldn't understand that. Like whenever I saw a girl in my mind, I was just like, that is a cute outfit, but you killed it like in a bad way with those sneakers. And it wasn't until like, a few months later that I was like, okay, everyone wears sneakers because they walk a lot in London. So that's definitely something that um, that I had to get used to. It was walking more. And if anything, it's not a bad thing. It's more of a good thing. Um, you get your step count up. So that is why so many people wear sneakers in London. And they actually call them trainers. Um, so if you hear someone call them trainers, they're talking about sneakers. Um, I don't like to call them trainers. I call them sneakers. So, and that's just me because I'm stubborn. <laughs> Travel. Um, so this is a picture of me in front of Buckingham Palace. This was during my first trip to London and I was super excited. Um, because I've lived in London for so long, I'm really used to it. So I normally wouldn't take a picture in front of Buckingham Palace if I were to visit it today. Um, how did you get around? So, and then the next question is, what was public transportation like? So I'll kind of answer these two together. Um, public transportation is by far the main method of travel in the UK, um, unless you're from like New York City where you're used to it. It's definitely something that you guys will learn to get used to once you move over. What was your favorite travel experience? Um, so I've seen quite a bit of Europe, but I think my favorite experience was when my friend Marielle um, was doing her study abroad in Europe. And um, it was amazing getting to go see her um, we went to Berlin together and then I also visited her in Vienna because she was doing study abroad in Vienna. So it was really amazing that after so many years, because we basically grew up together, that like who would have guessed that we would have both um, been studying in Europe. So it was really amazing to kind of see that. Um, what was your favorite place that you traveled to? So I love the beach, I love sunny weather, and I love food. So Barcelona is probably, well, it's definitely my favorite place in Europe. I love to go there. Um, did you find any cool places that you weren't expecting? There's a lot of like cool hidden places in London. Um, one of the really like cool places in London is the Leak Street Tunnel. It's basically an abandoned tunnel in London. Um, and it's just filled with graffiti, 
but so many street artists come and like do their work that a lot of pieces get covered up within a week or so so it's constantly changing um there's so many different and cool places in london i'm constantly finding new places to hang out what kind of free activities did you find um one of the great things about london is that a lot of the things to do are free so all the museums and art galleries they're free which is super exciting um if that's your thing what is one touristy thing you would not recommend doing um i don't know i feel like so you guys will learn the ins and outs of public transport and so on and so you'll see that like people in London, they're always in a rush, they're always off to the next place. So whenever I see people in like train stations taking pictures or like blocking people, I'm just like, what are you doing? Move to the side, you're in the way. Um, I don't know if that counts as a touristy thing. Um, because I live there, I don't do all the touristy things. Um, I have this mindset that I'll be able to do it. I have all the time in the world, which is not the best mindset, but um, because I am able to stay, I just know that it will always be there for me. So I'm not in a rush to do touristy things. And if anything, I, I personally tend to avoid touristy areas just because they're so crowded. Um, I tend to hang out in more local places. What is one touristy thing that is totally worth doing? Visit Buckingham Palace, of course. One of the cool things, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I'm pretty sure that it's true. Um, you can't really see it in the picture, but when the British flag is raised, I think it means that the queen is home. And if it's not raised, it means that the queen is out of the country, she's away. Um, I don't remember who told me that, but, I have a feeling that it's true and so I just think that's really neat. Housing. So the picture at the bottom is a picture of our housing on campus. It's right on the water and it's got the most amazing views. Um, I have lived both on and off campus so I've done both. Um, the top picture is me in my apartment in Canary Wharf. Um, Canary Wharf is one of the two financial districts in London, and it's only 20 minutes away from campus, and it has the most amazing views of um, East London and basically of London in general. So from my flat, I can see central London and all the buildings. Um, I was super excited in this picture because uh, my friend works for Citibank and so I was pointing to Citibank in the picture and I remember when I moved there I was just like oh your office is in walking distance you can come over all the time so I was just super excited that um, I live so close to Canary Wharf because I tend to hang out there all the time so it only made sense for me to move there. So what was your housing situation like? I feel like I kind of already answered all of these questions without realizing. Um, how did you decide which housing option was best for you? Um, I personally like living off campus. For first year students, I always recommend to live on campus just so you can learn the city. If you're doing a one year master's, I would say just go ahead and live on campus, especially if you're only going to be in London for a year. It just makes it easier. Um, what were the people you lived with like? Um, so the people I lived with on campus, um, I've seen it all. I've seen really nice people and I've seen people who could be a lot nicer um, but in my first year I was super lucky that I lived with the most amazing people so um, that's another reason why I recommend living on campus um, because the people you live with they will literally become the first friends that you make so um, definitely live on campus at least for a year just so you can get your bearings.
Oh, and these are pictures that I actually took on campus. So, and they are literally so gorgeous. I love the view of the sunset from the university. Yeah, so I, this is definitely worth um, taking a moment to pause for. Um, oh, friends and family. So this is a picture of my friend Marielle. Marielle is my childhood best friend. We have been friends since the second grade. So we've been friends for 13 years now. Um, she came to visit me in London before her study abroad. And then once she actually started her study abroad, I went to see her in Berlin and Vienna. And this is a picture of us in London. Um, that building in the background that looks like a swirl dome thing, that's called the Gherkin. And it's my favorite building in London. I don't know if it's weird to have a favorite building, but it just is. I really like the way that it looks. Um, a lot of the architecture in London is very neat so not really neat but like very different very quirky kind of oddly shaped buildings so it's not really um traditional of the types of buildings you would see in america so the gherkin for example it's shaped like that um there's a building called the shard which is the tallest building in the uk um, there's a building called the walkie talkie because it looks like a walkie talkie. There's the cheese grater, the scalpel, and it's all because they're shaped like a cheese grater and a scalpel and so on. How did you keep in touch with people while abroad? Um, I definitely made an effort to keep in touch with my friends and family. It's definitely a two way street. So, um, yeah. How did it work for you to have a cell phone while abroad? So one of the things that I did, um, I decided to have two phones just because um, my American phone, it was locked by my cell phone provider. And it was really kind of, my parents didn't wanna buy out my contract. Um, they said to just buy another phone. Um, I don't know if that made sense economically, but I just went ahead and bought another phone. So I have two phones. I have one for America and one for the UK. And honestly, I just tend to use my UK phone now. I use my UK phone even when I'm in America, just because I spend the majority of my time in the UK anyway. So it's just easier for me. How did you meet people? Um, it's really easy to meet people on campus. We always have a lot of events going on. Um, so you definitely just have to have the initiative to go out and go to the events, even if that means going alone, um, meeting people in lectures. I meet people through work and so on. Um, and people in London, are not from the UK, if that makes sense. So there's literally people from all over the world. Um, a lot of the people you'll meet um, have probably just recently moved to London. So they're always eager to make friends and so on. Did you stay in touch with people? Yes, of course. Um, I will admit that I wanted to be that girl that disappeared after high school. So I literally, I like to say that I moved to London to live my best life and they never heard from me ever again. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I keep in touch with a lot of like people I grew up with, but in terms of like the people I went to school with, I literally said sayonara, sayonara I am going to a different country, see you never. Um, what are the locals like? So British people are definitely much more reserved in nature. They're friendly, but it takes time for them to warm up to you. Um, one of the things that I find really neat is, or super interesting, is that most British people haven't heard an American accent in real life. So a lot of what they hear is from movies, television, and music, and so on. So to actually 
hear in American speak is like a novelty to them. So for a lot of people in the UK, I was kind of like the first American that they met. And a lot of people were really like excited by that. And so many people were like, oh, I, I could just talk to you all day. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could, but I have things to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, people in the UK are really great. What were the people like on your program? Um, there were definitely more British people than international students, which I kind of liked just because, well, I wanted to go to a British university, so I didn't really want to be with a bunch of other Americans. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I definitely wanted to be surrounded by British people. Um, they were all right. I mean, um, a lot of people are super like engaged with learning. So it was always a lot of the same people all three years who were the ones asking questions and sitting in the front row. Um, and one of the things I will highlight is that I was the youngest person on my course. There were people of all ages. So if you're, it, let's say you're if you're not 18 and you're doing an undergrad degree that's completely okay i can guarantee you there will be a lot of people who are much older than you and so i wouldn't feel nervous if you're in that position um Haley, i don't know if you're here but you definitely come to mind um when i say this because i know it's something that we've talked about before um one of the things that i really love about british people is that as soon as they finish high school the most important thing to them is not to go to college right away i know that in america we have this mindset that if i don't go to college now i'm never going to go so most people will go to college after high school but in the uk most people will do like a placement or an apprenticeship or they will travel they'll take a gap year before they actually go to college and that's something that i really like um yeah and i kind of wish more americans were like that um so many british people that i've met they took a gap year and they just traveled so like i know that when you're American, we always just want to travel Europe. Like it's so far away, but it seems so glamorous and it is. But when you're from the UK and you basically like grew up in Europe, it's right there on your doorstep. So British people are more inclined to travel the world. So they'll travel to Africa, they'll travel to Asia, they'll travel to Australia. And so many people that I've met have been all over the world. And it really makes me wish that I would have kind of taken the same opportunities as they did because I've only ever traveled to like Asia and Europe. I haven't been to like Africa or Australia. And I really do wish that I traveled as much as British people do. Um, what was the most common thing people asked about where you are from? So a lot of people judged me whenever I told them where I was from. So uh, my family lives in LA. So I would always just say, oh, I'm from LA. And everyone would just give me this look like, are you crazy? Why would you leave LA to go to London? And um, it is like a difficult thing to wrap your head around. Um, but because I'm from here, because my family lives here, because I'm so used to it, I definitely wanted something different. So, um, and I've just grown to love London now. And I'm really fortunate in the sense that I get to split my time between the two. Finances and budgeting. Sorry that I don't have a picture for this. I just couldn't think of a picture to put on here. Um, how did you budget for your time abroad? So, when I first started, I was definitely that poor broke college kid eating ramen noodles every night. Um, and then I kind of learned to how to manage my money. So it was definitely a learning experience for me. 
Um, yeah, and I think I've become financially responsible. So I have like a savings account and things like that. And I opened up my first credit card last summer. And so um, I budgeted, I basically just planned for just the necessities and I tried not to splurge on things. Did you spend more or less than you thought? Um, I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. So I definitely try to just save my money for a rainy day and just only buy necessities. Um, I have a bad habit of splurging, but I don't do it all the time. So I feel like that's okay. Um, were there any expenses you weren't expecting? Not really. The only thing that comes to mind was when I was looking for an apartment. So when it came time to moving off campus, um, it's something that I wanted to do, but I just didn't realize how much it costs to actually rent an apartment. So I had to have the deposit and first month's rent. And that was basically 2000 pounds for me. And I basically had to cough up 2,000 pounds within like a month. And I was just like, I had no idea this was going to be so hard. So that is definitely something I wasn't expecting. And that's just because um, I wanted to live off campus. So I kind of made that sacrifice. Are there any scholarships or grants that you would recommend applying for? Um, so we do offer the international scholarship to reduce your tuition fees for the first year. Um, I feel like most students, if you are coming for fall 2020, I would have sent you scholarship information any like already. Um, if I haven't sent it to you, it's probably because you don't have an offer from the university yet. So once you do have an offer, that's when I usually send out scholarship information. Um, if there are, I don't know if there are any juniors on here, but if there are any juniors, um, this scholarship opportunity will be available to you around springtime of your senior year. So our scholarship applications open up in spring. So just to give you guys an idea, um, but I highlighted the word scholarships um, because I wanted to talk about my scholarship to the university. So um, I came to the university on a civic engagement scholarship. Um, civic engagement is basically volunteering. So for all of the volunteer work that I did in high school, and I did a lot of volunteer work. I don't know if you guys can read this email really clearly, but this is basically how I found out that I got a scholarship. Um, Jonathan, who is in the picture next to me, Jonathan is an amazing person. Let me just say that he's one of my he's one of my colleagues and he's also a really close friend and he's amazing. Um, he first started at the university as an enrollment officer for North America. So Jonathan actually helped me through my admissions process and I actually work with him now. And um, it's just amazing that this actually like happened like in my emails I used to call him Mr. Dudley and now I literally call him Joe Toes which is his nickname and it, it's like a nickname that we created for him in the office so I feel really lucky that I'm in a position where I get to call Jonathan one of my friends because he's really so kind and so caring about his students um so he was an enrollment officer but now he's an inter international officer for the Middle East and North Africa. So he looks, so in the way that I look after you guys from the US and Canada, he looks after students from those regions. And he's so hardworking and he's really funny. Um, he runs an Instagram account for work where he literally just posts updates on the university. So I definitely recommend following him um he posts not just updates but about students about current students about alumni so it's definitely i say i learn more about the university from following him 
um, I follow Jonathan. I don't follow the university on Instagram just to just to highlight how awesome Jonathan's Instagram is. Um, we will be doing a three day Instagram live series. Um, it's in the planning phase, but I thought it would be super interesting for us to do an Instagram live. Um, firstly, so you guys can hear a British accent, but so that we could talk about differences and similarities. Um, if there's anything that you guys want us to talk about, definitely um, leave it in the chat box so I can see it. Because um, we are in the planning phases for it. If it's something that you would be interested in, I guess, tuning into, um, definitely let us know so that we can um, plan for it and plan for it in a way that you guys will actually enjoy it. Personal growth. So when I was putting together this presentation, I instantly thought of this picture. So this is my friend Ryan. Ryan was the first friend that I made in London. We met each other on the first day of school, basically on the first day that we moved to London. He was my flatmate and we basically just figured out college together. Um, Ryan did not know how to do laundry and I thought it was just so funny. Um, so I took him to do laundry and I literally just watched him and I took this picture of him. And um, the funny thing is when he cycled it for the first time, he didn't put any like detergent. So it was literally just like spinning around in water. And we were all just laughing at him. We were like, Ryan, sweetie, no, you have to put soap in it. And he was just like, I didn't know that. So um, yeah, talk about personal growth. Um, what is one thing did you expect that actually wasn't true? Um, oh, I know. I don't have a British accent. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. But yeah, if any of you are expecting to pick up a British accent, it's not gonna happen unless you really commit to it. Um, I think I sound very American. Um, I think that I probably pronounce words more clearly now, but I still sound very American. Um, my manager, Felicia, has been living in the UK for like five years now, I think, five or six years, or maybe even more, I have no idea, but around that mark, and she still sounds Canadian. Um, Canadians and Americans sound the exact same. She doesn't sound British. So just a heads up for anyone who thinks that they're going to pick up a British accent. What was the hardest adjustment you had to make? Um, I'll say the only thing that I really struggled with was missing home. So my family lives in California. That is like an 11 hour flight so it's not always easy for me to come home whenever I want to so I kind of had to just make my peace with it um I definitely call my mom all the time I literally call her every day I call her around like 3 p.m because that's like 7 a.m her time and she's just getting ready for work and that is like the time of day that we get to speak to each other. And I really kind of cherish that um, because I don't get to have her with me in the UK. That's FaceTime is the next best thing. Did you have any embarrassing moments abroad? So <laughs> I'm sorry for this like awkward pause, but I I'm a very like clumsy person. I'm embarrassing myself all the time. Um, so yes, definitely. I had embar embarrassing moments abroad. Um, I am super clumsy. So I have a habit of spilling things on my clothes. And it sucks because I like to wear light colored clothes. So I have a lot of like white t-shirts and things like that. And I am the worst person to wear light colored clothes because I'm always spilling stuff on myself. Um, I remember I spilled like hot chocolate all over a white t-shirt and I sent a picture to Felicia because 
it was just ridiculous. Like I'm always spilling coffee on myself, like in the office. I used to be really bad at spilling stuff on myself in the office. And every it got to the point where they basically gave me like a UEL t-shirt and they were like, Caitlin, keep this on your desk because you're always making a mess of your clothes. And this is just your change of clothes that you're gonna wear from now on. Um, thankfully, I feel like I'm less clumsy now but it's definitely something that I've always been. I've always been clumsy. Um, did you cross anything off your bucket list? Um, yes, so there were a lot of touristy things that I wanted to do, and I kind of saved it all for when my best friend Tammy came to visit me. So when she came to visit me, I literally took her to all of the places that I wanted to go to in London. So for example, the Shard. The Shard is like a super fancy place in London. It's the tallest building in London. Um, you can go up to the top for the view. Um, you do have to pay for it. Um, but when my friend Tammy came, we decided to do brunch and brunch was so expensive but I knew it was going to be expensive, but I wanted to, I knew it was something that I wanted to experience with her. So I literally waited for her to come visit me. And then I took her to the shard. Um, yeah, that breakfast bill was awful. Um, thankfully it was our birthday. Um, so me and Tammy are born one day apart. So we like to celebrate our birthdays together. So um, yeah, we literally splurged when we celebrated our 20th birthday together. What was the most interesting thing you learned about the culture? Um, I don't know. I kind of like that British people, they don't stray far from their roots. So a lot of the people that I've met, they don't really have any intention of moving away from England. So um, I think because I moved away, seeing someone who was so rooted in their home, who could never imagine leaving, I kind of admired that just because I always knew that I wanted to leave. Um, what did you learn about your own culture by living in another one? <laughs> um, British people definitely think of Americans as like this little thing. And that's literally how they look at us, like not in a bad way, but they're so fascinated by how Americans act in society. So it's really, it was kind of amazing for me to see that. And I feel like after living abroad for three years, whenever I do come back to America, I, kind, I feel like I observe Americans more. Um, how did you deal with homesickness? FaceTime, I FaceTime my family all the time. And I basically would find any excuse to go home. So if I had two or three weeks where I had the opportunity to go home, I usually took advantage of it and I would fly home. Um, what did you learn about yourself? Um, I don't know how to phrase it, but I always had this initiative inside me. And I feel like I really became my own person in London. Um, I remember on my first recruitment trip, Felicia and I were, we were just driving and we were talking about our experiences in London. Um, as you guys know, I started at the university as a student but Felicia also started at the university as a student. So she went to London to do her master's and then ended up staying at UEL to work, just, just like I'm kind of doing now. And so she asked me what I love about London and why London. And I kind of looked at her and I gave her a response that 
I never gave anyone. Um, I feel like I'm feel very comfortable with Felicia. So I know that I can speak from the heart when I'm with her. And I literally just looked at her and I said, I know that London isn't the place where I grew up, but it's the place where I became my own person. And Felicia just had like the biggest smile on her face. And that, I don't know if that answers the question, but I feel like I finally became my own person in London and I will forever love London for that reason. So I don't know what the future holds for me. I don't know if I'll stay here forever, but I will always love London because that's where I finally became Caitlin. <laughs> Um, how are you different? How are you the same? I'm different in the sense that I'm more responsible and I actually have an idea of how the world works and how adulting works. Um, I was definitely naive in high school and didn't really know much about the world and so on. How are you the same? I will always be easily excited by things. I will always be super happy. Um, I generally have a positive outlook on life and it really does show, especially when I'm working. So in the office, everyone is always like, especially Andre. So Andre works in the visa team and Andre always comes over to my desk and he's like, Caitlin, why are you so happy? Caitlin, why are you always smiling? And like, he asked me that every day. And I remember one day I just looked at him and I said, Andre, I'm happy. Like, what else do you want from me? And so, um, yeah, I really like that I have this kind of positive attitude. It's definitely one of my strong suits. Returning home. So we are, I think we're basically at the end. Um, did you experience jet lag when you came back? How did you overcome it? Um, the first two years of traveling back and forth from the US and the UK, jet lag was definitely my enemy. I struggled with it. It definitely hit me more than I feel like it hits the average person. But I think in my third year of kind of traveling back and forth, I got used to it and it was honestly so amazing that I wasn't tired after an 11 hour flight. I was like, I finally got used to it and it only took me two years. Um, yeah, so. Did you experience reverse culture shock in what ways? Kind of. So Americans are always super outgoing, willing to speak their mind, willing to just speak, and it doesn't matter where they are. Um, and I've always been like that, but I feel like when I moved to the UK and I saw how reserved everyone was, I kind of learned to be reserved as well. So I feel, I hope that kind of answers that question. Where are you going next? So I am currently um, in LA with my family. Um, we're all safe, thankfully. Um, I hope you guys and all of your families are safe as well. So um, I came back to LA just before the UK went into lockdown. Um, yeah, so I'm in LA at the moment and I'm gonna stick around for a while until it's safe to go back. Um, so I'll be going back. It's, I basically, I'm basically just waiting to see when is the best time to go back, but I am going back. Um, what is the number one thing you're excited to do now that you're back? Um, so I've actually been in America for maybe eight or nine weeks now. And this is the longest I've ever been in America since I moved to London. It's, well, I enjoy being home, but it's definitely very strange that I've been home for this long. Um, I do have a dog in California, so I love being able to see him. Um, did you bring back any souvenirs? Um, my mom always asks me to bring back chocolates from London, so I usually do that for her. Um, what is one thing you wish you could have brought back with you? Um, I feel like this doesn't really 
pertain to me just because I'm still living in the UK and I will be in the UK for the next couple of years. So I'm going to skip to the next question. What do you think of the length of your program? Was it a good amount of time to be abroad? Um, I think three years is perfect. Um, it's definitely a good time to be abroad. I feel like most students they wish that they had more time. Um, so yeah, what is one thing you would change about your study abroad experience? I definitely would have taken advantage of more opportunities. I probably would have traveled more, but I was always just so focused on work. Um, I always wanted to be working. And because I had traveled Europe a lot, I didn't really care to see more. Um, so I've definitely seen enough of Europe to satisfy me. So I never really felt the need to go travel. Um, yeah. How would you describe your degree abroad? That's a typo. How would you describe your degree abroad in five words? I would say it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> questions this is a picture of the queen i thought you guys would like that um if you have any questions this is my email um as well as my phone number um and i've just started um our instagram account again so i've just started posting pictures we used to be active on instagram um a few years ago but it's something that we wanted to bring back. So definitely um, follow us on Instagram for pictures of London um, and stuff about like pictures from like my trips in the UK and things.